Good afternoon. How wonderful that the sun came out, but we knew it would. Um, there would be nothing to stop this glorious day and the celebration of the graduation of the class of 2012. As all of you know, this is an extraordinary group of young women, diverse, talented, extraordinarily capable, with skills that will lead them far and wide, and we know they will do us proud. They have been through a lot in their four years at SEM, and we celebrate today with all of you and with all of them as they see this step in their lifelong goals and achievements, and I look forward to hearing from each of them in the years ahead as they head off to college and to life beyond. Thank all of you for joining us. It is because of you, families, friends, trustees, faculty, other students, that we join together as a community in support of these young women on this special day. So it's my privilege today to welcome all of you and have the program begin. I have two special awards today to non-graduates, to people in the community who make a difference. First is the Betty Butzer Brown Humanities Chair. At graduation in June of 2008, I was pleased to give the Betty Butzer Brown Humanities Chair to Harry Schooley. Four years later, the time has come once again to honor another distinguished Buffalo Seminary teacher. The Betty Butzer Brown Humanities Chair has been given by Captain John Brown to honor his wife, Betty Butzer Brown, class of 1944. I am pleased to ask their daughter, Trustee Margaret Brown, to come forward to help me give the award. The Brown family recognizes that outstanding teaching is the foundation of a SEM education and they have endowed this award to celebrate the accomplishments and dedication of an outstanding member of the humanities faculty at SEM. By endowing this award, the Browns have assured a legacy that honors the service of our most outstanding faculty. The recipient of this award will receive an unrestricted honorarium. Today, we honor someone who has taught for more than 25 years, nearly all of them at SEM. She's an artist whose work is exhibited in galleries around Buffalo, has been shown in the Albright Knox's Western New York exhibits, and is, she is represented in the Birchfield Penny Collection. She is a teacher, advisor, mentor, colleague, and friend. To honor excellence in teaching, and dedication to Buffalo Seminary and its students. The Betty Butzer Brown Humanities Chair is given this June 12, 2012 to Kate Simons. Next, whoop, next, the Paul J. Kessler Award. The Paul J. Kessler Service Award honors someone whose service to SEM and to the greater Buffalo community exemplifies the dedication that Paul exhibited during his many, many years of service. We give this award only when the service of one individual seems so extraordinary that we want to find some way to publicly honor him or her. I would like to ask Mary Kessler, some class of 2010, to come forward to help me present this award.
Today, we are pleased to honor Kevin O'Leary. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin has been dedicated to serving Buffalo Seminary since he joined the board in 2005. He served as chair of the Board of Trustees from 2009 to 2011. Under his leadership, SEM began its residential program, increasing our enrollment and expanding our student body to include young women from across the country and around the world. Kevin helped to find the houses, secure the funding, and with his wife, Janet, saw that each home was furnished and decorated to become a home away from home for our students. In the weeks before the first house opened, Kevin and Janet could be found hanging like fixtures, ironing linens, and arranging furniture. They were on hand to greet new students and their families that first year. Beyond the residential program, Kevin has been the steady hand that has helped guide me through these first five years of my tenure as head of school. Additionally, he has served on nearly every board committee and assisted every board chair as a leader and dedicated volunteer. Kevin's service goes well beyond all that he does for SEM. He has been deeply involved as a member of the Board of Directors of Child and Family Services since 2007. As you know, the mission of Child and Family Services is to strengthen families and promote the well-being of children through prevention, intervention, education, and advocacy. Kevin also serves on the board of Just Buffalo Literary Center, whose mission is to create and strengthen communities through literary arts. Just Buffalo supports the love of reading, the art of writing, and the power of the literary arts to transform individual lives and communities. If you see a pattern in Kevin's service, it is no surprise. He believes that communities are strengthened through good relationships, strong services, and excellent learning opportunities. He understands the value of building and nurturing programs that strengthen our communities. He sees the importance of giving back to the community in which he lives and does business. And he is willing to give, to give to the causes he supports, and he isn't afraid to ask others to join him. It can be challenging to honor and thank someone who nearly always shrugs off recognition, and yet who seems so effortly to be there whenever he is needed. Kevin O'Leary has given so much to all of us and it is a privilege and an honor to recognize him with the Paul J. Kessler Service Award and add his name to this plaque in the library at Buffalo Seminary. Thank you.
It's a privilege to introduce this year's graduation speaker, one of SEM's most famous graduates, Lauren Belfer, class of 71. Thank you. Thank you, Jody, and thank you, everyone who's here today. Um, I'm really quite honored and humbled to stand before you today as um, everyone was walking in. I thought about the very deep debt of gratitude that I owe to the seminary. Um, you know, it's now 41 years since my graduation. It's a very long time ago. Um, but seeing everyone walk in made me remember um, the courage and the independent thinking that my teachers really supported in all of us when we were students and uh, gave all us students the courage to go forward into our lives through their example and through their dedication. Um, I'm very pleased to look around and see many people here who enriched my days at SEM, including Gary Sutton and Harry Schooley, and my fellow students, um, Curtis Miles and Ann Danahy O'Connor and Devin Parker Marlette. It's wonderful to see them here today. And I'd like to pay a special thanks to my mom, who's here today. Um, I think that um, we are all, I think it's fair to say that most of us, at least here, are both children and parents, and um, I think we all know the, the debt of gratitude that we have to our parents who work so hard um, to raise us and bring us to this point. And I know I've taken a lot of inspiration from my mom, and I'm so pleased she's here today. Uh, so, I graduated from SEM in 1971, 41 years ago. It's a long time since I was in high school. Uh, when I was trying to write this speech, I wondered if there was anything I could say that would make sense to you graduates of today as you face leaving the shelter of home and high school to embark on your independent lives. The world has changed a lot in the 41 years since I was in high school. My thoughts went to the 40th reunion of my SEM class, which took place last year. In honor of the reunion, my closest friends and I took over a bed and breakfast on St. James Place, not too far from SEM. We were five women, five SEM girls. Each of us is in a committed long-term relationship, and among us five women, we've raised eight children. We came of age in an era of discord and debate over whether women could, quote unquote, have it all. That is, be mothers while pursuing careers. I suppose that we did, in fact, have it all. After college, and for some of us, graduate school, we started careers, we married, we had children, we took care of homes, and we continued our work. We had choices, and we made use of them. Some of us chose jobs with flexible schedules, or we chose to pursue our careers from home the way I did. Some of us took breaks from professional work when our kids were young, and then returned to work when our children were older. Some enjoyed great professional success and opted for early retirement. Our lives have been blessed. Our lives have also been more challenging and more difficult than an outsider might suspect after seeing our outward confidence and hearing about our personal and professional successes. 41 years ago, we sat where these graduates sit now. Many, if not most, of our high school dreams did not come true. But other dreams, more practical dreams, and also more daring dreams, took the place of our high school dreams. As we talked into the night at the bed and breakfast, 
we realized that to some extent our lives had been shaped by chance and by coincidence. The man we happened to meet at a party and ended up marrying. The boss who got a promotion and took us with her, providing an unforeseen opportunity. But we also realized that we weren't simply passive recipients of our lives. We fought long and hard for our professional and personal successes. Persistence was the word that had ruled our lives. I won't betray the confidences of my friends by revealing the details of their experiences, but I can tell you a bit about my life. I was 45 years old when my professional dream came true and my first novel, City of Light, was published. At a book signing here in Buffalo, someone asked me what it felt like to be an overnight success. The question surprised me. As far as I can see, there's no such thing as an overnight success in anything that we do, personal or professional. The term overnight success bore no relation at all to the life that I had led. I decided to become a writer when I was six years old. Don't ask me why, because I don't actually know. Just came into my mind one day and stuck with me ever since. I spent my early years writing short stories about talking animals and about warrior princesses riding into battle on horseback. At SEM, I started writing poetry. My marvelous English teachers at SEM especially Edith Taylor, encouraged my writing and met with me over and over to give me special tutorials to help me progress in my work. That's another example of what it means to go to a small school where professors really care about their students and are willing to take the extra time to meet with them and help them when they have special areas of interest. When I was a junior and senior at SAM, I sent my poems around to magazines all over the country. I collected rejection letters from all the best places. <laughs> Gradually, I began to write short stories and to try my hand at novels. Meanwhile, I went to college, I graduated from college, I began working. I still nurtured a dream of becoming a writer, but I had to support myself. I worked as a paralegal, and I worked in television documentary film production. I worked at newspapers and at magazines. All the while, I was getting up early in the morning to write before going to my job. The first short story I had published was rejected 42 times before it found an editor who loved it. 42 rejections is a lot. Sometimes I wonder, what would have happened if I'd given up on this story after 10, 15, or even 20 rejections? Many people would have given up after 20 rejections. 20 is a respectable number as when it comes to rejections. <laughs> but by sticking it out, one rejection after another, I learned a crucial lesson. If I'd given up, that story never would have been published. I also learned that artistic judgments are always subjective. The story that one person hates, the next person loves. 42 rejections hardened me to this fact. I'm happy to tell you that my second short story to be published enjoyed much greater success. It was rejected only 27 times <laughs> before it too landed on the desk of an editor who loved it. As some of you might know, the idea for City of Light first came to me while I was sitting in Delaware Park looking at the clouds reflected in Hoyt Lake. I was already in my late 30s when I had this, some might say, crazy idea to, what, to write what turned out to be a 500-page book about Buffalo. The research and writing of City of Light took six years. Or to put this another way, my son was four years old and in pre-kindergarten when I began the novel. He was 10 years old and in fourth grade when I finished the novel. 
He grew from my hip to my shoulder in the years that I worked on what I hoped would be my first published book. I stress the word hoped because there was no guarantee that anything would come of it at all. Many times during those six years, I was tempted simply to give up on what had become an increasingly difficult project. But I couldn't give up because if I had given up, all the previous years of work would have been rendered a complete waste, and I couldn't face that. When I finished City of Light, two agents promptly rejected it. Same old story, and while I was very upset, I guess I wasn't surprised. And yet the third agent who read the book loved it and wanted to represent it. She sent it out to six or seven editors. Several of these editors hated it. Several were indifferent to it. They didn't hate it, but they didn't love it either. But one editor loved it. Just one editor, and that's all it takes. She accepted it for publication. When City of Light first appeared in print, it received a few truly awful reviews. It also received terrific reviews, and I'm humbled to say that the novel became a bestseller, not just in the U.S., but in Great Britain, and it was translated into six languages. Finally, the dream that I'd nurtured since I was six years old had come true. So when I look at you, the class of 2012, sitting where I sat 41 years ago now, the most important thing I can think of to say to you is, don't give up. Sometimes the line to reach your dreams will be a straight line, but more often it will be a line that tacks like a sailboat. And remember, too, that once you reach your destination, you're not at the end of the story. Say you fulfill the dream of finding a wonderful partner and getting married. You have a beautiful wedding, maybe in this very church. And then you wake up the next morning and you find yourself at the beginning of a new story, a new dream, to build a fulfilling life with another person. This isn't always so easy to do. Or say you get a great job, the job of your dreams, and you adore it. But right away, the next job, the next challenge, the next dream turns up on the horizon. And say you're lucky enough to publish a successful novel when you're 45 years old. The next thing you know, your editor wants to know when you'll have your second novel ready for publication. And no sooner is the second novel published than she wants to know when the third novel will be ready. So what did my seminary friends and I conclude from the days we spent in Buffalo last year celebrating our 40th reunion from this wonderful school. We concluded that we had indeed accomplished a lot since graduation. But we realized that we still have a lot left that we want to accomplish, dozens of dreams that we want to pursue for ourselves and for our families. These are dreams that we never could have conceived of when we sat where you graduates sit now. Yet these dreams are based on everything we learned from books and from our teachers and from each other when we were students at SAM. And so, class of 2012, I wish you good luck. I wish you steadfastness in the face of adversity and above all, I wish you the courage never to give up. Congratulations, class of 2012.
with Chair of the Board of Trustees, Amy Martocci, Judge Amy Martocci, Class of 1988. Natalie Catherine Schatz. Maya Janae Shiyun Radicia Firestein. <laughs> Isabella Deborah Dixon. Spencer. Congratulations. Sarah Ehab Shafiq. Madison Leah Polk. <laughs> Shelby Ann Kowalski. <laughs> I am so excited. <laughs> Don't give me <laughs> Sarah Mary Skasha. Congratulations. <laughs> Caitlin Naomi Orta, diploma given by trustee Michael Purley. Congratulations, people. Ivy Ann Spire, diploma given by Trustee Alice Jacobs. <laughs> I know, really. Congratulations. Leonora Norma Margarita Carnath. Congratulations, thank you. That's great. Madeline Kennedy Cleary. Do you want to do it? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Michaela Rochelle Farley. Congratulations. <laughs> Rachel Patricia Spaulding. Carolyn Metcalf Kirsch. <laughs> Rebecca Catherine Spaulding.
Sarah Gellertner Gardner. Alana Maria Letty. Congratulations. Congratulations. Da Song Kang, diploma given by trustee Christopher Hyden. Isabella Carla Buscarino. Yes, congratulations. I know, I know. Yun O. Oh. <laughs> Helen Juliet Brown. <laughs> Dana Elizabeth Tuzzolino. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Erica. Francis Douglas. Congratulations, Erica. <laughs> Ariana Marie Rabin. Danielle Delaney Trolley. <laughs> Grace Kittinger Klaus. Donna Victoria Kimmons, diploma will be given by trustee Lori Bassett. Thank you. Congratulations, Donna. <laughs> Shade Anyebo Douglas.
Victoria Ann Lester. Congratulations. Jasmine Nicole Foster. <laughs> Mingus Daniels Taylor. <laughs> Jamil Harris. <laughs> Melissa Case Jacobs, diploma given by her mother, Alice Jacobs. Ying Chen. And Kiro Teresa Afetabo. <laughs> Jamie Nicole Angle. Margaret Sanderson. Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, this is great. Emily Rose Cardulo. Eliza Badia K. <laughs> Jessica Rose Perfetto. Congratulations. <laughs> Kendall McLean Preen. Congratulations, Kendall. Peyton Margaret Michael. <laughs> Alla 
Alexandra, Tatiana, Sheffer, Holland. Diploma will be given by Trustee Gordon Pierce. Congratulations. Congratulations to the class of 2012. in my friend's brand new car. I suppose that's the weird stuff of which memories are made. And if li the lyrics weren't so wholly inappropriate and such an unfortunately uninspiring choice, I could have somehow woven them into my goodbye to you. Now that would be memorable for far too many reasons to list. Instead, I'd like to leave you with the realization that we teachers really were once seniors in high school too, tottering on the edge of childhood and adulthood, ready to tip toward the latter. And yes, like ours, your years will fly by so quickly that someday before you know it, you will be left with only the residue of days like today. You've already had a glimpse of this. 
Doesn't it seem like yesterday that you shuffled into sophomore English class, nervous, unsure of yourself, scared of new expectations, scared of making mistakes, and yes, very scared of me. <laughs> Yet after trying, succeeding, failing, and trying again, in nine short months, you grew immensely and you enjoyed looking back on how far you'd come since September. Soon you wheeled into junior year with several new tools prepared to succeed, and I learned so much from you as well. I discovered a love of kayaking with you. Well, you were in clunky canoes, but I was in a really cool kayak. <laughs> uh, I discovered how to more effectively teach many different kinds of learners. I learned how quickly an argument between classmates can turn into a brawl. <laughs> I learned about some incredible music. I discovered there's a place in education for hysterical laughter. I'm gonna add her here that I got over my fear of public speaking. Um, I learned not to take myself too seriously when, unbeknownst to me, one unnamed senior, okay, I'll name her, Michaela Farley, <laughs> sealed my purse firmly shut with scotch tape, making it very difficult to pick up my children from school because my keys were in my purse. And because of all this, I made many friends who I know I will have for the rest of my life. Yet after participating only yesterday in class day, one second. <laughs> a celebration of your past four years of friendship and academic success, I think it's fitting to close graduation with a focus on the future rather than the past. So if you've taken an English class at SEM, you're well aware of the literary trope, the hero's quest and the building's roman. As a matter of fact, a quarter of you took a whole semester on this very topic. For those of you in the audience who don't know what our seniors know, in short, it's a common narrative framework. A young, young, inexperienced hero is given a mission wherein he or she must overcome great obstacles without the help of parents, prove incredible feats of strength, mental, emotional, and physical, and in the end, gain experience, maturity, and the knowledge of hidden inner strength. Think Odysseus, think Harry Potter, think Dorothy Hale. Well, my friends, it's your turn. This is it. You're writing your very own building's roman in which you cast yourself as the hero. When crossing the threshold of those doors, just as you have departed from Sem's great wooden doors for the last time as students, it's finally time to make some big choices. What quest have you given yourself? What quest will you give yourself? You'll need to imagine a master quest that frames your own narrative and then several smaller sub-quests along the way. And there will be a few that you can't even imagine right now, some huge, some inconsequential. You'll also want to plan for the obstacles that may arise along the way too, what they may be and how you, the hero, will overcome them. Now your quest may not be as far-fetched as killing the ultimately evil dark wizard, and your obstacle doesn't have to be an encounter with he who won't be named at a tri-wizard tournament. Your quest should be real, and it should be all your creation. So get to it, girls. We've done all we can do for now. And it's time for you to explore, absorb, learn, teach, and conquer the big world outside of SEM. This is where my graduation 20 years ago comes back in the picture, and the graduation day of all of your teachers at Buffalo Seminary. When faced with our own quests many years ago, we chose a path with very little fame or fortune, but one that would allow us to lay the groundwork for your own futures. Our paths have crossed yours on purpose because this is how we complete our own quest and capture our own holy grail, through you. Every time you succeed or learn from your mistakes, you honor those who have put time, energy, and so much love into helping you become the women you are today. In saying that, I invite you to pay your parents and teachers the utmost respect by making your life lusciously ripe with significance. Make us proud of what you've become and what you will continue to do or don't do. As you walk out the doors, hug your parents tightly. I don't want them to leave. <laughs> and thank them for the myriad of gifts they've given you. Thank your teachers for preparing you for your quest. And for goodness sakes, remember to check in often to tell me about all the obstacles you've overcome and what lies ahead. 
In saying that, I'll tell you that I love each and every one of you. Thank you for giving me the honor of being the last to say goodbye. But like I said a moment ago, I hope this isn't a final goodbye. So instead of farewell, I'll say, see you on Facebook. 